During the Cold War, both sides were trying their best to outthink one another and keep the enemy guessing as to what they were planning to do next. As a result, both sides needed to be innovative and forward-thinking in their military strategies. This led to the United States coming up with Project Iceworm. This was the plan to keep medium-range nuclear missiles, a modified version of the Minuteman ITBM known as the Iceman, under the Greenland Ice Sheet. The site would be close enough for strikes on most targets in the Soviet Union due to the missile's 3,300 mile range, but would be remote enough for them to never suspect missiles to be in the area. They planned to build a system of tunnels 4,000 kilometers long and cover an area of 52,000 square miles which would be used to deploy 600 missiles that would be kept in 2,100 silos in order to keep changing their positions. In addition to housing 600 missiles, 11,000 soldiers would need to live at the site full time. In order to test their plans for Project Iceworm, in June 1959, the US began construction of Camp Century. However, before this, in 1957, Camp Fisklench was constructed on a much smaller scale in order to test various techniques that would be used for Camp Century and throughout Project Iceworm. For example, testing the Peter Snow Miller to bore into the ice to create tunnels that were the foundations for the facility. Due to the success of Camp Fisklench and the information gained, Camp Century was given the go-ahead for construction. Instead of revealing the true nature of the facility to the world, Camp Century was classified a research facility with a purpose to test various construction techniques under Arctic conditions, explore practical problems with semi-mobile nuclear reactor, as well as supporting scientific experiments on the ice cap. And as a result, the Danish government gave their permission to build the camp. This would be situated 150 miles from the Thule Air Base. The first task to be completed was to construct a three mile road in order to help bring in all the machinery and supplies to construct the eight million dollar facility. The base was made up of 26 trenches which would be dug, covered with steel arches and covered with snow. Inside these trenches would be wooden buildings which would make up the base's living areas and included dormitories, a hospital, a kitchen, a barber shop, a chapel, a recreational hall and a communication centre. All of the camp's electricity was supported by the world's first portable nuclear power generator, the PM2A, and the drinking water for the 200 residents was supplied by a well dug into the ice. The reason for choosing a nuclear generator over a diesel one was due to the experience at Camp Fisklench, where large amounts of fuel was required to power the smaller facility. However, within three years of the facility being built, it was determined that the ice was moving far quicker than expected and that the tunnels and planted missile launch stations would collapse within two years. Due to it becoming clear that the ice would not be able to support the project and its facilities, Project Iceworm was scrapped in 1963. Camp Century was mostly evacuated in 1965 and its nuclear generator was removed in 1966. It was closed for good and its tunnels collapsed soon after. However, the story of Camp Century does not end there. Despite never housing nuclear missiles, the camp still could cause a nuclear catastrophe in the not-so-distant future. The 47,000 gallons of nuclear waste created by the reactor was left under the ice, along with 200,000 litres of diesel, with the plan for it to be entombed there for eternity by continuing snowfall. However, it has since been estimated that due to global warming, the ice covering the waste could melt as soon as the year 2090, with the potential to leak back into the ecosystem and flow into the ocean. Only time will tell how much of an impact the camp will have on the environment. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please take a look at some of the videos you're seeing on screen right now. Um, please like and subscribe and uh, stick around for any future videos. Thank you.